Thank you. Um, so what I want to share with you all tonight is, um, you know, in the past two or three years, my perspective about how you can build really, really good search changed dramatically based on this is a very interesting um, technology that's, that's been emerging uh, in that, that time frame. Uh, so I'll give you a quick intro. And then I want to talk to you guys about what is, what is dense vector search. Um, and it, it sounds like a kind of esoteric, really technical topic. But what I think is so exciting is that it is becoming very easy to add this amazing kind of search uh, into your application. So my hope is that it's not too dense and, and technical and, and, in fact, gives you guys a picture about how you might actually just do this for fun in your side projects. Uh, and I think there's really just great stuff out there now to do this. Uh, so um, I'll go through kind of an example of, of kind of a quick thing I did this afternoon just to try to show that you can make one of these, these powerful search apps so easily. Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the harder challenges of taking, taking these applications uh, into production. But I hope you'll just leave with this, like, wow, there's this kind of really cool way to add great search to your, your applications. Um, so uh, just a little background on, on me and why, why, why is language so important to me. Uh, I'm, I'm the chief technology officer at a company called Case Text. Our business is legal research. We build tools for lawyers. Um, if there's anybody who cares about language uh, more than anyone, it's lawyers. Um, so uh, we're, we, we, were, we are the first company that brought um, kind of this next generation search uh, to, to the legal space. Um, and that's, that's kind of where, where my background is. I've been working for Case Tax for uh, seven or eight years and been through several generations of search, uh, search technology in that, in that time period. Um, I'm from Lancaster originally and feel extremely fortunate to uh, have been able to move back here, work remote uh, for the folks who are able to do that. Uh, it's, it's just an awesome thing. Um, so very, very glad to be back in Lancaster. Maybe. We'll try. <laughs> Um, so, I said that there's, there's a little bit of this that's going to be a little dense. Uh, we're going to do just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of math so that you all are on the same page. What do we mean when we're talking about dense vectors? Uh, but don't get, don't get too, it'll get interesting, I promise. Um, so, what's a vector? Really simple, a vector is just a, a list of numbers, um, an array of numbers. Uh, and the really important thing for us to understand is that if you have two of these vectors, uh, and if they're the same length, there's a very natural way to ask um, how near, near together uh, are these vectors or how far apart. And that's going to turn out to be really important when you're talking about language data. Um, so I, I wrote down a fancy formula for what, what, what does it mean to measure the kind of similarity between two vectors. But for those of you who've done you know, math in the past, uh, you know, in high school or in, in college, um, the cosine of uh, similarity is, is the, the cosine is the kind of the angle. You think of it as measuring the angle between two vectors. Vectors are just, think of them as arrows, uh, like in this picture here. Uh, there's an angle between those two vectors. And vectors that are very close together um, with a very small angle in between them are very similar. Vectors that kind of stand um, at a 90 degree angle like that are very dissimilar to each other. And vectors that point in the opposite directions, uh, like in the far right here, are, um, they're, they're, they're opposites. Uh, and we can, it turns out that that actually, there's a way to kind of think about that when it comes to, to language data. Um, there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Um, and at, at heart, what vector search is asking is, is this, this question. Uh, so yeah, vectors are these, these lists of numbers. Um, you have all of these vectors stored in some database. Vector search is just answering the question, I've got a vector in my hand. What are the vectors that are most similar to this one uh, that I have in my hand right here? OK, that's, that's it for the boring stuff. 
why do you care about this at all? Why does this even matter for uh, talking about search? Well, you know, I mentioned at the beginning that, that there's just been some really amazing changes that have, have emerged in the world in the past, really we're talking very recent time, past 10 years. Um, this is driven by changes in uh, kind of deep learning and, and the way people are doing machine learning. A lot of major breakthroughs in um, how you can represent uh, language data. This started with this, this famous um, paper from Google that was called word to vec The idea with word to vec is, you know, given a word, there's a very natural way to represent that word as a vector. And when you can do that, there are very, very cool uh, ways that you can, can use that vector representation to do interesting stuff. And since then, there's been this big um, kind of explosion in uh, different ways to take text and represent them as vectors. Um, and ultimately, when you are wanting to build really good uh, search applications, um, you know, you can take some of these new ways of representing text as vectors, um, and you could do amazing stuff with search that if, if you'd been working in search five, six, seven, eight years ago, you would have been doing all by hand. You take, you know, if, if, you, if you've done solar or elastic search in the past, you probably spent time writing, you know, these kind of deep custom analyzers to process your text, and then you make these gigantic synonym hierarchies, and you spend, you know, weeks tuning those hierarchies so that you get the relevance just to the right place. I'll show you in a, a demo in a second, and you'll, 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 I think, hopefully be blown away, because I'm not doing any of that crap, right? It's not doing any of it. Uh, and, you know, 10 years ago, that was the only option. Um, all right, so using these new vector representations, you can really build some amazing um, search experiences. That's a good transition point, uh, so I'll go back. I'll show you what, um, what we've done at my company uh, for attorneys. So we've got this fairly complex query that we're starting with here. Um, hope you all can see this at the top here. So it's, um, the query we put in here is, planning a garden is sufficient to satisfy the legal requirements of squatters' rights. Really complex query. Look at what comes back. Now, it, you, you, probably none of you in the room are lawyers, right? Any lawyers? Didn't think so, good. Um, so this is actually a spot on result that's relevant to this query. Cultivation of land and gardens and the pasturing of animals and the mowing of fields are normal acts of use and service sufficient possessory acts to blah, 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 right? Spot on legal uh, match. Look at that query. It doesn't look anything like what's in the result here. Astonishing. Uh, it, it is the, the first time I saw this. I just, I couldn't believe it because in the past I would have spent months trying to tune a query like this to match a result like this and I wouldn't have gotten there. I would have just failed. Um, so just to give you a sense of like why this is so kind of revolutionary. Uh, all right. So um, I mentioned uh, word to vec and just to give you a little bit of an idea, you know, Go, you know, if this, is, if this is an interesting topic to you, word to vec is kind of a really nice uh, entry point into some of this stuff, which can get pretty technical. But the, the idea behind word to vec is, you know, Google came out with this great way to take words, identify them in some sense with vectors. Um, and so it, they were able to do this kind of thing where, you know, they took the word king and the word queen, and they can represent them as vectors and do you know, reason about reasoning on top of those vectors. In fact, there's sort of a kind of underlying arithmetic that goes along with these things where you say, oh, sorry. This is the best vector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you take king, take away man, um, you get queen. Um, and you can actually see this, like, um, you know, if you start just playing around with these these libraries, you can actually kind of do this. Uh, you, you can ask the question like, what's king who's not a man? And you get the answer queen. Amazing. Um, similarly, these great representations that kind of capture how bad and worst 
are you know, very, very closely related. And good and awesome are totally different, right? But, but close, close together, right? There's big separation between the things that are bad and the things that are good. Um, so just a little like kind of plug for this. All right, my goal uh, was to, to really um, emphasize like how easy this, this kind of new way of searching is becoming. Um, let me give you kind of the high, like, how do you do this view? And then I'll show you that it's actually easy, easy to do. Um, so what are the kind of main pieces that go into using a technology like this? Well, you have to have a good way to take your text and turn it into those nice vector representations. So that's step one. You need to get some way of vectorizing text. Um, then you need a nice search system that can store those vector representations and can be uh, able to you know, retrieve those, those vectors uh, on demand. Um, and you know, there's, there, there, in order to kind of do this well, you need to be able to sort of break your text into reasonable uh, pieces. In the application I showed you, we settled on breaking the pieces of text into to sentences because that's a, a natural kind of unit. You take those sentences, you've got your vectorizer, you turn them into, into vectors, um, and, and then you shove those things into your, your vector storage system. right? So now you've got this big database of vectors at the end. A user comes to your application, they type in that query I showed you. At query time, we take that, that input text that the person typed, we turn that into a vector, and then we're really just computing the similarity between um, you know, the, the, the user's query vector and all those vectors in the database and asking which vector in that database is the closest uh, to my answer. And the amazing thing is that, that that kind of similarity turns out to be really, really meaningful to, to humans uh, reading text. Um, and that's it. Uh, so it seems pretty like you know, there, there, there are a lot of steps here. And when I started this, you know, started using this kind of technology three or four years ago, you had to do all of these steps on your own. Um, what's really cool today, and I, I really did just put a de demo together this afternoon because I wanted to prove to everyone that this is easy and you can do it in an afternoon. Um, you, you can now kind of go out and get a lot of this just off the shelf in open source packages, in hosted packages. I know a number of folks here are connected to Elastic. Elastic has totally bought into this idea of vector search and are kind of figuring out how to make that a lot easier for folks to, to gain access to. I did not do this with Elastic, but I could have, I promise, uh, to the folks who, who are here for Elastic. So I'll show you a quick demo um, here. Um, so, uh, Demo I wanted to show you guys, I took, uh, you go get all the Star Wars uh, scripts. Uh, forget all the other episodes, you just care about the three, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, go to Cog Kaggle, Coggle, whatever. You can get, get all those, those Star Wars scripts. They're pretty, uh, pretty cleanly kind of broken out, blah, blah, blah. I want to show you we can build a cool search system on these Star Wars uh, scripts really pretty quickly. Um, I uh, am going to use a vector search system called Weaviate. There are many, many options here, including Elastic. Uh, there, there, I could probably name three or four others uh, if you ask me to. Um, but I just picked one at random and said, I bet, I bet we can do this quickly in an afternoon, make this happen. Um, the, the thing that I think is kind of cool about Weaviate is it, it, you know, I mentioned there's this step of like, all right, I got to do this like crazy deep learning process where I take my text and turn it into vectors. It's got like seven or eight different plugins that let you choose a provider that can do that for you, or you can bring your own, or blah, 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 right? Uh, there are a lot of ways to do it. I chose to use a provider for my vectorization called cohere.ai. Uh, but again, lots of folks out there who are engage in it because it's such a, such a useful way to do search. Um, and what's cool is like you're going to see all of those steps I can kind of consolidate into just like one thing uh, in this, this demo here. Um, so 
this is a, a Python uh, notebook, so we're going to work in, in Python here, but I get their official uh, WeV8 client and install that. Oh. oh, yeah, of course. Hopefully. Is that better? Better? All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so um, I, I'll show you really quickly here. Like, I, I was just shocked. So, so look, I made a, you know, I, this is one of those things that they, you know, this company, Weviate, its business model is, you know, we have an open source thing and we sell the, like, cloud hosted version, right? Uh, so I just spun up one. I'm, I'm on a free trial of this WeVA thing right now, uh, hosted in the cloud, but you could easily run this locally on your, your machine. The cohere part is a little more tricky to run on your own, but there are options there too if you just like don't want to deal with any, any third parties. There are ways to, to do that, that as well. Um, to kind of engage in this, um, I have this, this Star Wars data, right? And we're going to have just a couple of objects uh, in that, that data set. And I'll show you what, what it kind of looks like. You know, when you set up one of these, like, like any database you set up, you got to define a schema, right? Um, unless you're, you're schemaless and then forget about you. I don't know what to do with you. Um, so define a schema for, uh, for your, your, your data. We got a pretty simple data structure, and I can I can show you roughly what it looks like. But you guys will you just get it, right? The um, the you know we have the title of the script. Uh, I'm going to make that a string, which is just kind of a traditional keyword data type. Um, we have a line number because this data set lays out the specific you know line numbers. If you want to sharpshoot anybody about their memory of Star Wars, you can say, well, actually on line 687, right, like. Whatever. Um, we have a speaker, Darth Vader, Princess Leia, Chewie, whatever. Uh, and we have the text of the line. The data types here are pretty self-explanatory, but this is really the one to focus on, right? It's the text field that's going to do the interesting stuff here. That's the thing that we want to pass through this vectorization oper operation so that we can get this really cool search experience. So I'm laying out my schema here. I shove it into that client uh, I created and say, this is what my, my data is going to look like. Um, I'm happy to post this all, by the way, if this is interesting to, to folks of, to dig into. Um, but uh, then I run through. I, I've got these, these files loaded locally here. I'm going to do some processing and clean up to make them fit my, my schema that I laid out uh, up, up above. Uh, and load them up. Uh, I'm not going to do it here because it'll take a, a few minutes. But really, I don't know. Felt like five minutes. I had a, um, I had this data all loaded into this this vector. And that's that's three, three movies. Um, so now we get to the really interesting part. We're going to do some querying uh, on this stuff. Uh, so so I just started this session. So I'm going to have to initialize my client here. Um, but then we can have fun. Okay. So, um, one thing to mention here is uh, one of the sort of open questions is, all right, you get this new great vector search technology. There's still cases where keyword search is, is useful. What a lot of folks are really fascinated about is how do you like put these two things together? So when this says hybrid here, um, you're going to be allowed to like mix a little of this vector search and mix a little of the keyword search together to get really great search experience. When I set it to one up here, that means we're doing all vector search. And look at how amazing this is. The words here have no overlap. The words, there, there's no overlap between this query and the top result in the list, which is the dead on top result, right? This is vector search. What does it do if you switch this to keyword search? So we'll go all zeros here. So zero means, or sorry, yeah, the zero means just two keyword, no vectors allowed. What? What is that? Look at that, right? Um, 
It's just amazing. If you've done any kind of search before, like, yeah, yeah. I set up, you saw what I set up to do this. Nothing, right? Just told it like amazing. Does anybody want to try a query live, the most dangerous thing? Well, what would be an interesting single line to look for in, in the, three, the three Star Wars? What? Oh, that's a good one. How about? <laughs> oh, that is a really good one. What was it, Harry? Harry Foam Chaser. Foam Wrangler. Wrangler. Now, didn't really work. But, but, but like, I mean, you know, it, it may be picking up on, like, Rogue Leader is a little bit like, um, like a, it's a name. or I don't know. Who knows? I'll tell you, it's probably going to be worse if I switch to, yeah, look at that. That's what happens in keyword. If you switch to vector, it's a little bit more uh, on the, yeah. On, but yeah, fair enough. Cool. Um, and uh, you guys can come talk to me afterwards. We can try more of these. And I'll, I'll post this, and you, you all can, can play around. My main point here is just that it's, it's really pretty easy to set up something like this. You can build these really, really cool search experiences. Uh, yeah. Um, and I mentioned this in the talk, so just to outline kind of, so this is a toy example I made. I've made real systems now uh, on this. Uh, when I made those real systems, there were, uh, you know, it was a little bit harder uh, at the time. There's still some open questions here. If you look at the like, latest version of Elastic, you actually see some of the stuff I talk about here. It's kind of represented in where Elastic is on, on some of this stuff. They haven't taken a strong position on how do you put keywords and vector search together. Everybody knows that, that the way to get the best is to kind of put these things together. But what's the, what's the best way to put these things together is kind of an open question. My advice is if you're building a search application, you want to use vector search, you got you to gotta have some data to like evaluate against and decide for your specific use case what's best, because nobody really knows right now. Um, there are definitely a lot of challenges, and I, I kind of glossed over um, how hard it is to make a database where you can do this, this vector. You saw how fast those vector searches were. Really hard to do that fast. Um, you can't actually do that cosine calculation, take your vector, do it against all the, the things in your database, and get it back in you know, 200 milliseconds. Um, there's really cool work that's been happening, lots of open source projects, especially from Facebook, where uh, folks investigate this deeply. Constantly evolving problem, how do you sort of scale this, this up? Uh, my company, I think we, we, you know, we know sort of how to scale this to you know, 10, 15 million documents. Going beyond that is, is hard right now, but it will happen. Um, yeah. That's all I have, uh, but I'd love uh, questions about search or anything else, or Star Wars, you choose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, we should talk, right? Yeah. Image, image processing, whole other huge way that people are using vector search, right? So important, especially uh, satellite images, huge, huge area. Yes. Um, these vector representations, that concept of similarity generalizes beyond language. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, it happens to work really well for language. Well, I know. Look at that. Um, you, leave it up for now. Yeah, I'm going to leave this here. This will definitely like remind me. I really do need to do an update. Yeah. I was remaining. Let's. Let's. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to do it, and we'll see. Um, we'll see if we. I. Uh, who knows. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Any other questions? Okay, uh, back here. Oh man, that's such a good question. Not not nearly as much, right? I mean, it matters. It, it does matter how much pre-processing you do. Um, but a lot of what, the reason it, it doesn't matter quite as much is many of these new ways of vectorizing things, they're splitting up. And they're, they're doing some of that in a much more uh, kind of statistical way, right? It, it, it does matter, but, but not, I mean, like you kind of saw in this example, I didn't really do any of that. A little of it's happening behind the scenes, but so much of it's just driven by how powerful those representations are. Yeah, such a good question. Is similar vectorization like this useful for like cross language support or like like real? Wow, yes, that's such a good question. Yes, it is. So some of these systems where you see people like type in a sentence and like, yes, it, the answer is yes. It depends what vectorizer you're using underneath. Some of the new stuff that's like from you know like the stuff that powers Chat GPT, for example, like. That is deeply multilingual. So you could type a sentence in Arabic and get similar sentences in Russian um, because this, this, these representations, they're, it's hard, it is, it's remarkable, but they are able to capture semantics rather than like syntax, which kind of goes to the stemming question. It's a lot less relevant um, because the, the way these things work really high level. They're, they're trained to sort of predict, um, either predict, you give it a sentence, it predicts like what's the next word that follows, right? And somehow, just magically, like you do that a lot of times. You play that game like, I'm not going to show you what the next word is. You have to guess it. If you get it right, I give you 100 points. And if you get it wrong, I take away 100 points. Somehow it learns um, this kind of deeper level of language, which does allow you to make those cross-linguistic Comparisons. It, it's amazing. It's a great question. Um, probably. Yeah, it, it it will definitely work better than anything you cook up by hand. I'll say that. <laughs> Um, which is the magic, like you can remove so much of that, but then you know building really like kind of great applications, it takes that extra factor of like, all right, my domain, it's really going to matter to like resolve these pronouns in the right way, and and so then you may layer on top of that additional logic. With what I'm showing you here, this should be 100% deterministic. Um, that's a good question, though, because a lot of stuff that's coming out now, like you ask chat GPT one time, and then you ask it the next day, totally different answer. This, what I'm showing you here is fixed because we're taking a sentence at a point in time, passing it through a vectorizer at a point in time, and the representation that comes out is what's going in your database. So then, then it's all deterministic from, from that point on. But yeah, it's a good question. Do you have any, any ability to run this in reverse and like take like Apple Action or Legalese and turn that into like a normal kind of speech framework? <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> That's a billion dollar idea. There, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say yes, there's a lot of potential to, to do that. Like the, what we were seeing a little bit in the examples I showed is taking a more formal language. The, 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 the thing I opened with, and we've seen this in our own uh, application internally, you can type something a lot less formal in legalese and you get the formal answer back. You can go the other way as well. Yes. 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 I 
think it depends where you're, where, what level you're trying to plug into, right? What I showed you today, Python irrelevant, right? Did this Weaviate, which is just one of many examples of clients that can kind of do this. They have language support in Java and JavaScript, you know, like cross the board. If what you're trying to do is really, you know, kind of go deep and, and do it with this guy back here was sort of talking about like, you know, can we identify the pronouns? That's where you start to drift into the like, well, we might need our own custom uh, language model to, to be doing the vectorizing there. And at that point, a lot of the action is, is happening in Python. It, it's, it, there's stuff in the other languages, but Python just seems to be, be winning there. Uh, but no, I, I would say my point here is that like, if what you want is to like, take an application from zero to something with really good search experience and you don't want to screw around with building like taxonomies and all that crap, you can do that in any language you want today without a lot of, of pain. Anything else? Thank you so much. Those are awesome questions. I really appreciate it. And I promise I will update my, my <laughs> operating system. So the next time I see you all, you should probably check and make sure I did it. <laughs>